Hello everyone! Oh my god, I miss being able to just sit down and yap <laughs> on a video, um, on art video specifically. Because I have been streaming and I have been yapping, but all the yapping is connected to the stream, so does that really count? Well, to be fair, all the video yapping is also related to the video. Okay, I'm yapping again. <laughs> so, if you follow my Twitter or you managed to catch the legendary five minute stream, you would know that I have been wanting to draw Miku on stream forever. Forever. At least a month. But every time I do, like two for two, every time I try to set it up, something happens to my internet and I couldn't stream it. So I think that was a sign for me <laughs> to turn it into a video instead. Honestly, it was supposed to be like an experiment. Not really experiment. I wanted to try um, hand cam stream, but that would take away your little VTuber because I'm using my phone as a webcam. I'll figure it out. I'll get. I'll. I should buy a webcam so I can do hand cam streams. So maybe that's a sign that I'm not ready to do hand cam streams. So, yes, I am drawing Miku here. I have. A reference up on my monitor you can't see it here but there is a reference up um one of a pose and one of the specific autumn miko outfit because it is september i drew this in august but it is september so it's almost fall and i just felt like autumn miku just makes more sense to draw here and yeah <laughs> something more seasonal um i did make the mistake of using a really soft graphite lead like if you see me erasing there it it smudges around more than it like actually erases um that's because i'm trying not to erase it i'm trying not to erase it all the way i just there are parts where i just need to lighten it up um so i should be using a harder lead or a different colored lead for that my second mistake <laughs> Is not having a needed eraser. I used to have one, but I ha I abandoned it for a long time, so it kind of hardened, and I had to throw it out. So I'll look into getting a new one. For this Miku, I was debating if I wanted to do markers or watercolor, because I do miss my paints, but I also want to improve my marker process. I think I said this in my last video where I was working with markers, alcohol, bleh, specifically working with alcohol markers, that I didn't really have a concrete process that makes sense with the medium. So I'm trying something here, which you will see in a bit. So I'll leave you to the sketch, which I normally don't do. I normally don't include a sketch in, like, in my recordings, do I? Anyway. Go enjoy that for a bit. <laughs>
here, um, you can see that I'm trying something different. I wanted to have more, what's the word, cohesive shadows in this one. So I tried um, using one color for the shadows and then putting everything else on top later. And I, well, you'll see later if it worked out or not, and I will let you decide whether or not it worked out. But I did enjoy this process. I would like to experiment with different like shadow colors. Um, I usually turn to this one. I think it's called Pale Lavender or just Lavender. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I actually do use this in my watercolors. I don't want to say a lot because I only got the color recently. But it is a good <laughs> color to use in mixing my watercolors. To like lighten it up or tone it down, like make it more muted. But here for alcohol markets, it's pretty, it's pretty bright, I would say. Brighter than the lavender I'm used to. I did enjoy this process. I do want to like stick with this and see where it takes me. Because I saw different artists do something similar on a, an Instagram reel where they did the colors first with one like purple bluish marker and then put every other color on top. Um, I, that, I, I would say that that inspired me to do it like this. Because um, what I used to do was do all the colors first and then the shadows with this specific marker. But I'm not sure if it makes too much of a difference. I'll have to like compare with another drawing I did before or make a new one with that process. I don't know. We'll see. Touching this back and I'm thinking, wow, I really have a tough grip on when I like hold my art supplies. I need to loosen up, dude. Whoa. You see me struggling with the markers there? It was at this point I realized I didn't have the exact colors I wanted to use. Like, okay, this is an excuse to build my marker collection, but honestly, I don't think I use it enough to justify having a larger collection. So I have to make do with what I have. Like, here. It's such a lighter blue than the Autumn Miku um, navy blue sailor uniform thing. I, I referenced one of the Miku figures. I'm not entirely sure if that like counts as an official outfit. I don't know. I just listened to her music and I think she's really cool. <laughs> I think something that translates really well between my watercolor process and my almost non-existent marker process is that um, the brush tip, since they're both brushes, well, in a sense, um, I already have like a certain process in which I like follow a certain direction, like I follow a texture or a shape, or it, like you saw me filling in the skirt in one direction as much as I could. Um, I do the same with my watercolor. To be fair, I feel like watercolor is a lot more forgiving in coloring big spaces because you can just like slather it with water and then put pigment and like, I'm, I'm making actions with my hands as you, you can see me, but you just spread the pigment across <laughs> as compared to markers where it's really, you only really just have the paper and the brush tip or your chisel tip, whatever you're using. For this part, um, I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing. Because I saw on the on the reference image I was using, the tips of her hair were a different shade. And I didn't quite have that shade. So I kind of just used whatever I had. Which is basically what alcohol markers are, you know. You don't... Unless you have, like, the... the what's it called? Those giant 78 Copic sets. I don't think you'll have any color you, you actually need. Something I learned from this, actually, 
I will say, I think I would rather invest in Copics than my touch markers. I have so many touch markers, but with the few Copics I do have, I I really enjoyed it a little more than the touch markers. Like, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough for me to want Copics more than touch markers. However, I do hear that Ohuhu is a great competitor against Copics. So I'll, I'll look into that first because it's a lot cheaper. We will see. You'll find out in a video eventually when, if and when I get new art supplies anywhere. I think my favorite part at the end of any illustration is putting in the line art. Like, I know normal people do the line art first and then color within the lines, but this feels more natural to me where I let the colors take me where it wants to go before I put the line art on top. Like, other than an artistic process, it's also because I don't know how this... <laughs> how this pen would react to alcohol markers and if it will smudge and quite frankly there isn't a single marker i am willing to sacrifice to do that test but yeah i really enjoy using brush pens i love doing little line art details like this and i could have done better on her eyelashes i believe but i do love like floofy eyelashes using this kind of like thick brush pen I also really like figuring out which lines should be thicker than others and which should be thinner. I don't know, the line variation is always so interesting to me. Whenever I see different artists with really wild line variations, it's like, wow, that's so sexy. <laughs>
now that it's like closing up, what do we think about the process? Like, should I invest in different colors to use as shadows? So that it's like, how do I say? Like, should I use more orange shadows for skin tones and use the lavender for cool parts? Or do we like the process where there's a lavender underneath for the shadows? Because I think it looks cool, but I think I should experiment more before I say that, oh, this is my alcohol marker process. But I'm not sure how to go about it or what colors I should get or invest in. The thing about alcohol markers is that you're stuck with the color you have. <laughs> Unlike watercolor where you can mix it up. It's all good though. It's fun. I'm enjoying like the challenge of the process. Here's the final piece. Thank you so much for joining me um, in drawing Miku. I love Hatsune Miku. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll see you maybe in a stream, maybe in the next video. You'll see. Thank you so much for watching.